Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday, it's July 18th, this will be our chart lesson for today, and today played out similar to yesterday, we traded down and then found support, and then we had a big run up, of course it wasn't as big as yesterday, but this is still very similar to, you know, what happened yesterday, we traded down, almost looks, it's almost the exact same thing coming down, and then we shot off to the upside uh, of course the rally was not quite that big today but it's still uh, still basically uh, what I'd call almost a repeat pattern but anyway let's let's talk about the trades and we'll go from there there were I was looking at this as a two-tiered channel working down there's a shorter term one here with a break and a new low and then we reversed but you couldn't deny this one, especially when we turned down here and looked like we were going to turn down here again. Um, so this channel, I mean, you can see the midline, everything's valid, but we never got a retest on this one. And that's really because the support here was just too strong and the market rallied. And we got outside the overnight highs here, but you can see that once we got up here the highs we just went sideways so this is somewhat of a range day there's a downtrend and then an uptrend and and in between we're just going sideways and really most of most of the price action after the open we trade we had a two we had two legs down here and then we just went sideways there's really still a downward bias but there's a lot of sideways action here before it rocketed off and then once it reached the upper side up here, we pushed through, but it just went sideways after that. So, um, you know, you really just had to play the, the trends, the ranges, and then the trends again. And so it, um, not a lot of trades today. There just weren't a lot of good setups on my chart. You might add some better signal bars in a few of these places. And if you did, you probably could have taken a, a couple other trades. But there's just not much, uh, there just weren't a lot of good signal bars at when there was a, uh, a setup. A lot of times there wasn't a good signal bar. The setup just wasn't great anyway. So, but we'll talk about that as we work through the trades. But uh, let's, uh, let's back out just a little and we'll go ahead and start working through the trades. When I sat down at my desk this morning, prices were working down through here and they were somewhere in here. And you just kind of had to ride this out. And there's a bounce down here, but there's no real good way to get in it. You might have looked at this as a failed break, but even then, look how bearish that bar is. Uh, you've got a bullish bar here. It's a little closer to the, it's still a little bit away from the EMA, but this trend is still in place. So I don't think you want to be looking for any longs regardless. So notice we're working up, we get a little close outside, we move back up. There's actually a second entry short right there, but we don't have a new high in place yet. There's a lot of congestion right there, uh, a lot of doji. Those are all doji type bars. None of them are perfect doji, but there's stems on both sides. So those are very neutral bars. So I don't think you want to enter that second entry. And if you had it, you would have got burned. But when it turns up here and meets this previous resistance up here, and now you got your break, a couple of legs up to a new high, you might take that one. I'm still not crazy about it. It's a little ways away from the EMA, so it's probably coming back. But you don't really uh, have anything that gives you a solid trend line up here. So you're just you're basically treating this like a failed break out of this congestion, and that's that's you know that meets the rules. So. And plus, it's a double top basically across here. So it meets the rules for a short, but I'm not crazy about it. I marked it green. And so, you know, here we are. We're at 830, and you really still don't have a setup, a decent setup yet. Uh, so then we, you got two legs down. You've got a possible trend line here, but it hadn't been confirmed yet. And then we just start going sideways again. And originally, I had this line I'm gonna go ahead and draw another one then we'll add this up here and you can see that's just really tight um, notice that we're going back and forth there was a failed second entry long here and if you would taken that 
depending on how you're set up on my chart you got stopped out of that one um but we just come off the midline so i you know you, you figure you're probably going to try to come back to here which is what happened we ended up working on down lower you also might have still been looking i didn't show this but there's your first leg down and so you might look for a measured leg and when we didn't get that that's usually a sign that we're going you know you're probably gonna get some serious movement in the other direction so that was another clue that we might be going higher once it headed up there but um yeah we just had two legs down so i'm not crazy about trying to go short in here once you add this one and you test it once you basically got a double top here and then a lower high with a fairly bearish bar if you could work this one out where you can get in where you can get out before here i like this one it's the only one that really gives you a good setup close to the resistance up here and the bias is still really kind of down here down to slightly neutral so what i would recommend when it broke lower if you could drop a limit order in here with enough room to get out before here then this trade's good and it would have worked regardless but i'd still would probably want to enter it that way i don't think i would enter here on the sale stop because you just don't have room and if it bounces there again like it did one two three four five six times you're gonna be in trouble so just keep that in mind but this is a double top with a lower high and so that's telling you it's kind of losing some steam here and that's a relatively bearish bar too so you just need to be able to get out before it gets to here and then there's another second entry short right here and it's a little breakout pullback but this is really your signal bar and this one didn't go higher but again you could argue for that to be at least green because it does fit the criteria it's just not again it's just not a good setup it's not a a bad setup but it's not a good one because you'd go short there but you really would have to put your stop up here and so you might take that one I, you know, if you want to be a little aggressive i'm not against that trade right there but i'm not i don't like it enough to mark it red i want to see this trend line confirmed and so we finally come back and we test that resistance once again it holds you get that bearish bar notice the new low first entry second entry that's a nice second entry nice bearish bar and that was a relatively easy trade it actually comes back again but by this time you you started you got some resistance here this is like a little failed break lower and this is probably more of a midline in here or something is what it is and if you kind of move it where it's across there you can see that's more of a midline than anything probably fits yeah, it fits about the same either way so you don't want to be taking anything off of that really but uh, but you might you might have gotten this is a lower high it is another turn off that trend line it is a really bearish bar but it's right back into this uh, resistance right or this support right here if you took this trade when it went sideways and you know you start stacking up here and that's basically a doji I would exit that one I'd take what it gave me and I would get the heck out and um, and it actually ticks back again right here but by that time you got two you, this supports you can tell there's too much support right across there and so you definitely wouldn't enter there and I don't think you want to enter long into the high so you've got the same problem going back to the ups, upside so once again you're just kind of sitting tight there uh, I don't think I talked about this trade I think I passed this one but notice the low and then a little a little slight push lower and then basically a double bottom but a little bit of a higher low the closes are higher the actual low of the move is higher so uh, but this is a double test of this and there's a, a little bit of room back to the EMA but the signal bar is not great uh, again you probably want to rate on a higher low and you get that here and it did push through the EMA and all but it's right back into this trend line and this trend line may continue to work lower and again you this is really really tempting to go short but when you look at how many times we bounced across there and we just bounced there again even if you went short right there you don't have a very much room to hear so i just don't think you want to risk any more shorts right there and then all of a sudden it reverses and takes off now there was a failed second entry short here but you got to go long right into that 
then it pushes through and pulls back. Then you got to go long. Of course, both of those you got to go long right into that resistance, and that's just too risky. Of course, this is a double bottom here, so you can count that like a new low, and then you get a first entry, and then a second entry, but it's not back to the trend line, and it's just a first entry here. You're way away from the EMA, and but when it tries to go lower again and closes inside there, it actually went lower, turns, and goes this way. You could go long right there. I don't know if I would go long right above that bar, but I'd be okay going long right there when it broke higher on the second entry, and especially being right off that uh, right off that uh, key entry point that trend line and something else I want to talk about I, I just I looked through a few questions today and there was an older question somebody asked me uh, and so they may ask the same question again is do I feel comfortable entering here way away from the EMA well that's a mixed bag it, 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 when you got a confirmed trend line it's working up that you know is a key entry point and you get a second entry long and you, a couple of failures to go lower including the failed second entry short then yeah I'd probably take that trade if this trade is in some other context I may not take it so you know the answer to that question depends on what's going on plus at this point this is looking like a repeat of yesterday The move down that falters and, and finds that little failed break lower, and then you get the failed reversal, and then all of a sudden it takes off. I mean, this is a this is a repeat pattern. It's just it's not in the same day. It's just a opposite day. So yeah, in that case, I'm probably going to take that trade. And I, if it wasn't for this one right here being right into this over overnight high, I might I'd probably mark it blue. But because it's continuing to get further and further away from the EMA and it's right into that resistance I'm probably not going to take that one I still marked it because there you know the, your bar might be a little bit late, uh, different and really you could argue for this to be a little higher even so but I usually like to use those closes and these were the last closes so I'm not crazy about that one uh, I think you're taking a risk of it pushing through that resistance so I marked it green mainly because I just want to talk about it but I'm not crazy about that trade but notice it pushed right on through uh, you pulled back here and you got another close and, and it's trend line still in play but you don't want to be going home going long at the high, very high of the day into a two bar matching high and you because you can see this is what usually happens to you and then we're just kind of going sideways but notice there is a trend line there and it's working and there's actually a failed second entry long right here but notice how we match we, we go sideways again it's a big bearish bar so when it broke lower there that basically was probably going to be a failed second entry long but I'm not going to risk it on that support resistance line into the EMA uh, all that congestion look at all those bars stacking up and there's a doji in there that looks like a doji this is, looks like a doji uh, the odds are it's going to push under and pull back even if it's going lower and then if it does that you can get another chance to get in but it may bounce there at the same time and it does it pushes through pulls back gives you a bearish bar and everything's still inside that trend line so now I feel more comfortable going short there and this one doesn't take off but it's a easy uh, you know easy scalp and then we bounce and we're just going sideways right into this uh, you know you got to be careful now we've got a we got what looks like a little bit of a close out there but we got a little what looks like a little bit of an overshoot too neither one of those are enough to convince me this little downtrend's over but and there is a second entry short here so you might have considered that but but I definitely would consider take this trend line up here and all this support that EMA again it looks like we're just back up here going sideways again actually it, it let's go all the way to the right so you can see what it looks like there you don't that's really the first close outside this little trend line and we don't really have quite have two measured legs so it may just keep going sideways it could push up it could go down so I would skip that trade and it turns out it looks like a spiking channel after we get another bounce right here and notice what it did it pushed back through that resistance and you get a failed second entry short 
and it gives you a bullish bar that closes above that resistance. So that's what you kind of want to see if, if it's going to go higher. And so I think you might take that one. Once it, once it got to going sideways here, I probably wouldn't think about any more long entries at that point. Uh, it looks just too sideways. But at this point, it looks like a little drop out of that sideways stuff and a failed second entry short and a bullish bar. And we're through, it closed through the resistance there. Notice how these bars closed under, all these closed under, and then suddenly it pushes up. So we're probably going, they're probably going to have some people trapped there. So I like that one. It's close. You could argue for it to be green. Really, it's just, there's no real clarity here of where prices are going longer term. So all you got to really work on is the short term stuff. And we may have had a break in a new low. This trend line is probably still in play if you take those first two swings. And it might even be a little lower because of the, this close there. But usually it's the closes of the bearish bar because this still close. Notice how that close is still inside. So, but you could have, it might even be more like this. It's just hard to know at that time. There's just not a lot of clarity here. And it ends up not holding, but. There's your break, and now you got a new high, so now you might look for something short, but then you don't want to go short right back into that support resistance line because what happens is prices, they get stuck up here, and then they get stuck below, and then now they're stuck above. Notice how they're not really going higher, but they they can't get back through this previous resistance is acting, acting as support. And even right into the close, we could never get below it. It had to go into the next, to the reopen before it pushed below it. And that's just the way prices react. And so all of this is suspect. This one I liked because I really thought we'd probably go to the other side. Didn't turn out that way. But you got enough evidence there that we're trending lower. Here, you're just kind of in no man's land. It looks like we're going to be trending lower when you get, you're making lower or higher highs and higher lows here. So that's why I like that one. And it did close back above that line. So you figure it would probably push up and test test all this stuff. And there is some resistance right here. But I, I talked about this with another trader earlier today. Uh, this is the one I'm most concerned about. This is a double top. So you have to be a little concerned. But this is, looks like it's going to hold. It looks like it's pushing higher. We're making higher highs and higher lows. So um, and a lot of times you'll push right through that stuff. Notice here today, we, we hesitated right across that resistance, but this is a lot more obvious. Look how many times prices turned down here. One, two, three, four, five, and it looked like it was going to turn down a sixth time, and it gives you that little trap, and it takes off, and that's exactly what they did was there's people trapped there, and when it pushes through, they're running all these short stops, and that's why it jumps up real fast like that. And uh, But, yeah, this kind of resistance, I'm going to be really afraid of trading into. This swing or this swing right here, you got to be concerned about it, but not as much. And where that question really came from, and I'll we'll go back over here because this is a good time to talk about it because this, this day, uh, it was this one. Uh, I had the conversation with a trader. He was worried about going long into that resistance right there which you always want to be concerned about the next resistance, but that's just one swing we're, you know, we're swinging down here and there's swings all the way up. And you can see, we kind of reacted to several of these swings on the way up until we got outside that. And then it took off. There weren't any, you know, you had to go into the next day and really the next day there weren't many resistance areas. So, so there's only a really one push up here and this is the EMA holding that resistance. And we're, uh, back over here, you've pushed back up through the EMA. So, um, that's, I'm not as concerned about that resistance right there. I'm more concerned about one that holds over and over like this one coming across here. That was one to be concerned about one, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 bars across there that couldn't close through that line. You go back over to this one and you got one, two, three, four, five bars there, but, but 
this one's made a higher high. This one's made a higher high. They're making higher lows until it makes a lower low. So this is just, I mean, this is something that you want to be aware of. Don't take, don't take this the wrong way, but it's not as important resistance that I'm going to let a good trade when I'm looking for a reversal hold me back. If you do that, you won't ever get long. I mean, you can go find reversals all over. Um, and, you know, here's one yesterday. You would have had to go short into the, those two bars. But if you, you know, if you let a, if you let the last swing completely take you out of a trade, then, you, you know, you're going to have trouble. Here's another reversal. Um, I wouldn't have probably taken that one. This one's, you know, you got a, a more spread of a double bottom there. And you got some other bars that have bounced across here as well. Let's see. Uh, here's a reversal. Reversal comes right here. Uh, of course, you got a little bit of room there. But anyway, I think you get my point. Um, we talked about, I talked about that in an email with another trader. And he felt that you should be looking for shorts there. But I, I disagree with that because um, I don't think you'd be, want to be looking for shorts here, right, right on this move up here. I don't know why I'm back over here talking about this trade, but if you, you know, if you look at this was what I looked at earlier, you, you could even look at this being a spike in channel possibly, but you can see the show of strength right there. And then this is really all one move. There's two swings in there, but that's really all one move. There's not much of a correction. And so you hadn't had much of a correction on that entire move up. So really what that is, that's one leg up with two swings in it. And then you get a two swing move in the middle. And that generally means you're going to get at a minimum another measured leg in the other direction. There's leg one. So notice where we got to it, tried to correct there, but this market was strong now and off it goes. So hopefully that's clear anyway. I didn't mean to come back and rehash that trade all over again. But I think that's important when you're trying to learn price action to understand the difference in the context. And, you know, people see patterns and say, well, why do you like the pattern here, but you didn't like it over here? And that's generally because you got to look at the overall context. And that pattern, you know, we're not pattern traders. So I'll remind people that we're not just looking for the pattern. You got to look at the overall context. And if the context fits the pattern, then you want to take the trade. But we don't just take trades because it's a second entry short or a second entry long or a failed second entry short or a failed second entry long. There's probably failed second entry longs all through here, but not all of them will be good trades you want to take. You want them to occur in the right context in the right location. And at this point, you were looking for them to occur off this key entry point or maybe off of this one across here or this one here or maybe even this one here. So... Anyway, that's enough for today. I'm done. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll wrap up our week tomorrow. But I'm done for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.